way was I got a book that I needed for a HR module for a year and it was selling on Amazon for 60 pounds. And I said, the initial idea was figure out how many more items they have in charity shops that are worth more money than they're selling them for and help them try and sell them. So that was, that was the initial idea. But, and that hasn't changed. It's still kind of at the core of what we do is, you know, we started out in DCU. I started out by just scanning books up in uh, the dorm room on DCU campus into Amazon and figuring out their value. And, you know, we've now done over three and a half million valuations of technology, of, of barcoded products. So that stayed at the core of what we've always wanted to do, but everything else has changed. And, you know, you'll hear people in all the entrepreneurship modules and in start, and everyone will talk about the lean startup iteration um adapting learning about things and go and trying it again and the reason they're talking about that stuff is because it it really genuinely is the truth you know every single thing that we've done from me scanning books in dcu six seven years ago to now you know we're working with over 95 percent of irish charity shops we've just raised a seed investment round and we're about to scale into the uk everything else has changed and everything else has changed based on that process that people are talking to me about in DCU and, and in entrepreneurship, that adaptive lean startup process where you have an idea for something, you go and you test it, you get feedback and you see if it actually works or not. And then you, you change it based on what that feedback is. And when I was doing this in DCU, Emer and Kieran were telling me this, but I didn't really believe them. I kind of thought, I oh, know, like they don't really know what they're talking about. I know exactly how this will work, you know? But of course you think that when you have an idea and it's your baby, but actually, um, we probably would have gotten a little bit done, moved a little bit faster if I had to listen to them. Well, the biggest challenge was always kind of the finance, really. And, you know, I think it's also one of the things that isn't spoken about in, in entrepreneurship is, you know, we kind of say anybody can be an entrepreneur, whereas actually the reality of it is like if you come from Bon Ogan, Glenogan, like me, or you come from Bally Pharma, the chances, the opportunity to be an entrepreneur are a hell of a lot less because what you need to be an entrepreneur is time and you need money and if you're working class and you don't have a lot of time and you don't have a lot of money it's going to be a lot harder so that was always the biggest challenge for me was trying to find the finance and not just the finance to invest in the company but the finance to pay bills and um, so people who have money it's a lot easier for them to set up companies than people who don't and that's the reality I don't think we think we talk about that enough. So that was always a challenge for us. And, and it's still the challenge, interestingly enough. You know, when we started out, the first grant we got was for 8,000 euros and we thought we were rich and we couldn't believe it. Um, and now, you know, we've just closed around for 500,000. And I tell the team, this is absolutely nothing. You know, the next round we need to we raise is going to be between three and five million because literally in this process of entrepreneurship, you're kind of always looking ahead and you're always looking at, what's the next big thing that we can do or achieve in terms of how our product works and how are we going to pay for that? And how are we going to scale and how are we going to grow? So um, that's always been the biggest challenge for us is the finance. You know, we're a social enterprise and our mission is to have an impact, right? And, but to do that, we have to grow and we have to be profitable. So what's important for us, even though we're totally focused on big, big impact and really making a change, actually you know what's incredibly important as well is staying really close to the finances and that's even i would say it could be even more important at the early stages but what you're trying to do is figure out if the thing the model the product the service whatever it is that you've identified is something people will actually pay for or is it something people will actually engage with you know maybe you want to have a, a huge user base before you uh, come up with a revenue stream for that user base that's fine but then your product becomes, how do we attract users? So you need to validate that. So what I would be saying, like, and again, this, is, this isn't something I did in the early days and probably it's definitely something I should have, was being absolutely focused on, on that piece around, this is what I think will make money or this is what I think will attract users or achieve whatever we want to achieve. Test, 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 and change, 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 and really just focus on getting that little thing, whatever it is, working properly um, and do that in whatever creative way there's one of my favorite examples around this that i've ever heard in in the lean startup space was two irish girls who set up um a company uh which has now scaled to the us and raised huge amounts of investment and the idea was they wanted a, an app for people to book hair and makeup um and what they started with was was two whatsapp groups so in one whatsapp group they got 
all of their friends who they knew had, would go out at the weekend or who wanted to get hair and makeup done. And they had maybe 40, 50 of their friends in this WhatsApp group. And in the other WhatsApp group, they went around to, hair, to people they knew were hairdressers and makeup artists and put them in that WhatsApp group. And then people would in the friends WhatsApp group would say, can I get a booking for eight o'clock on Friday? And they would go into the other WhatsApp group and say, first person to respond to hair on Friday at eight o'clock gets the job. And then they'd match them. So there was no technology. There was no booking system. There was nothing. It was literally just two WhatsApp groups to prove whether or not, first of all, people would engage in a digital sales makeup. And on the other hand, whether hair makeup artists would do the same and it proved really successful. And then based on that, they were able to go to funders and say, now we have 300 people in this WhatsApp group and 100 hair makeup artists and we have demand for way more. We need money to build a solution for this. And people were like, oh yeah, well, I can see why I should give that money because you actually have something that's proved your concept. It does a kind of a myth really that, you know, anybody, people who are entrepreneurs are special or are have or know something that other people don't, which is rubbish. You know, it's just a learning exp experience. You learn entrepreneurship in the same way that you can learn anything. You know, you definitely have to want to do it and you have to want to apply yourself to it, but you can learn it. That's a key lesson maybe that I took away from, from the time in DCU was, you know, if I want to get good at this and if I want to learn it, I, I actually can. It's okay to be open with customers or with the people you want to work with about your problems. So a lot of the time you kind of think, they expect me to be perfect. They expect us to have this polished sales pitch and to be knowing exactly what we're doing because we have to solve their problem. Whereas actually, if you don't, it's very easy to see through that. Like you go in and you pitch to someone and they kind of know straight away that maybe you haven't actually solved the problem in the same way in, in how you're actually telling them you've solved it. So it's, it's really important just to be totally open and honest. And there isn't, you know, a lot of time you kind of take the dragon's den approach of let's give the perfect pitch, even though half of it is made up, you know, just don't, don't do that. You can be totally honest and you can go to customers or users and you can say, I think this is your problem. Is it? Or um, I think I think this is the best way of, of solving your problem. What do you think about that? Or actually, I have no idea what your problem is. Can you help me figure it out? And people love that approach because people love to be part of the solution. And it's actually a positive thing. And it ends up being that the thing you solve is actually more relevant than the thing you might have had in your head because it's been based on user feedback. So, you know, at the moment, we have a, we've quite a big team now. There's 18 people in the business um, and we're very good kind of at supporting each other and helping each other overcome those challenges. And, and just we kind of realize now that there's always going to be challenges and there's always going to be obstacles. So, you know, when you do, that's the first thing to realize is that that's absolutely normal. So if you're not coming up against obstacles and if you're not coming up against challenges, congratulations, you either have the best idea and business in the world or maybe you have nothing. So challenges and obstacles are, are a crucial mandatory part of this i'm sorry you can't get away from them um and the thing is the first thing to do is just approach that with confidence and you know just be able to say yeah. it's actually it's actually no it's actually grand we have this problem it's that's fine and let's just take a breather and and go at it and and overcome it and be really logical and evidence-based about how we overcome that challenge people look at even this interview people will be looking oh he can, if he can do it anyone can do it he has something there's something different about him and therefore maybe he, he must be doing 80 hours a week and he must be doing you know this kind of myth exists that people are superheroes and that therefore they can set up companies and it's just not the reality it really really isn't um and i think i really fell into that trap for maybe two or three years after college where i felt you know everything is on my shoulders and i'm the only person that can do this um and it, it was two years in to the journey where I decided to, I realized I need people to help with this and I need co-founders. And if I had done that two or three years earlier, you know, my life would have been so much better and things would have been so much easier because you just lessen the burden and it's a lot more fun when you do it with other people. A, the big, a, a huge challenge was the fact that we weren't, we didn't have a team and I would really advise people you know, if I could go back, the first thing I would have done before doing anything would have been to find a team or would have been to maybe get the idea a little bit developed, 
but then I would have gone and, and tried to get a team of people to help me with it because it is really good teams that build really good businesses. It's not superhero entrepreneurs. It, it is a challenge to find the right co-founders. Um, I was very lucky, um, but I think actually in retrospect, my luck was kind of based on the fact that I had been do, so doing stuff that I didn't realize was hard work. So I was I was very interested in this space, right? So I was going to events and I was go, I, were, I was even going to online events or going to places or dropping into charity shops or going to vintage fairs, kilo sales, um, just things that I was interested in. And I hadn't actually realized that that was networking. You know, I was going because I was interested and passionate about these things. But actually, when I was going, I was meeting people and I was meeting people who had certain similar interests. So I think that's the best way to approach to approach it is if you start now. And I know it's difficult in the times we're in, but there's loads of stuff online and, and things will be opening up hopefully relatively soon. Um, and even if they're not, you can reflect on what is it that I'm really passionate about, right? If you're not really passionate about it or if you don't really care about it, you just want to do entrepreneurship because you think that's the cool thing to do, maybe take some time out and just really reflect and think, actually, what's the thing I'm really passionate about? And then I would start from there. So I would start from this is an area I'm really passionate about and I would happily go to an event for an hour and listen to people talk about this because I'm interested in it. And if you can develop that interest and that passion in the space and then go and put yourself in places and situations where people are talking about the things you're interested in, you're naturally going to meet like-minded people. And you're naturally going to meet people who could potentially be co-founders. I think peer-to-peer -peer stuff isn't done as well as it should be in university. So I think the typical style of the students are there and they look up at the board and they talk to them is what we've adopted. But we haven't sat around and said, is that the best approach? Maybe we have, I don't know. But I, my general sense of it is from other stuff I've been involved in throughout college, but mainly after college, I've learned a huge amount through peer-to-peer -peer work. So instead of everyone sitting in a line looking up, put everyone in a circle and get everyone talking to each other and get everyone sharing their own experiences, get everyone sharing their own ideas. And if you can facilitate group discussion, people are much more engaged. Like I'm much more engaged on this call because I'm doing all the talking. So you know, you're much more engaged and you're much more invested in something if you're talking and if you're actively participating in it. And I think that that advice probably sticks true for people in, in teams as well in your startup, you know, especially when you're, you're starting out, you might find there might be a lot of ego or there might be a lot of really strong opinions. If you can get people to develop listening skills and peer-to-peer -peer skills where it's supportive, it's cooperative, and people are learning and bouncing ideas off each other and really being open and honest in, in how they feel and think about things, that can be a much more engaging way of getting people to, to kind of open up and to take on the knowledge. And then, you know, obviously you need to facilitate or take that in, the, in if it's an academic piece of work, it needs to be taken in a certain direction. But I still think you can achieve those academic goals or those learning goals through that peer-to-peer -peer process. You know, I think I've always had a bit of an interest in, trying to do something creative um but i think you know perhaps the, the interesting thing as well about the opportunity in in university is it's really really okay to make mistakes and it's really okay to try and do things that don't work out and use them as a learning experience so you know we did in the student societies i was involved in was for every good idea there was 10 that went nowhere so I think it's a great idea it's a great opportunity to try and just practice that but I definitely spent at least the same amount of time in doing extracurricular stuff events and socializing that I did doing academic work um, and actually I'm glad I did because um, you know I picked up way more skills practical skills doing that uh, than I think I could have doing theoretical stuff so organizing events and really throwing myself into to student life I definitely picked up a lot around teamwork and you know how to get things up and running building relationships the more time I spent getting to know people in college and the more time I spent really throwing myself into all the different things that were out there the better it became you know you meet so many more people you learn much more about yourself and you try and you know I think the best thing about college is it's kind of a space for you to to really figure out what your passions are and you know for example like I went into 
DCM yeah. first year thinking I wanted to work in a corporate and the nine to five, 40, 40 hours a week and senior executive job and got the opportunity to do that through the course and realized that it was a million miles away from what I actually wanted to do. So, you know, I think the best thing in, in university is to definitely throw yourself into absolutely everything that you can and uh, try and find your passions or find the things that are really interesting and feed them. So, you know, go to the events and go to the, the places where people are talking about and doing the things that you're really passionate about. Mm-hmm.